Hi everyone, uh, today I would like to present to you very intriguing, exciting subject of research and also a methodology that is being developed and has been developed uh, recently and being continued to be improved and very significant advancement in the field of genome editing. I'm talking about prime editing and base editing. I'll try to explain to you what it is all about, uh, provide some comprehensive primer, describing these methods, and also giving you a little bit of uh, history and to uh, telling you a little bit about those who invented this methodology. Of course, uh, my sources of information uh, are open. I just let me briefly present to you my sources that I have used and I have it here on my desk uh, in my hands right now. A fundamental book on genome editing is The Code Breaker, Jennifer Dodna Gene Editing and the Future of the Human Race by Walter Isaacson. A fantastic book very intriguing book uh, from the very beginning of uh, inventing uh, CRISPR and genome editing methodologies and up to most recent advancement. Of course, uh, since uh, this book uh, was published uh, not that uh, long while ago, but uh, still it was 2021. Uh, even since that time, uh, research is moving forward with such pace that we hardly ever can catch all the advancement in the field unless you really do the experiment and uh, do it yourself or uh, hear from others. And uh, of course, uh, another interesting book that I have used and I highly recommend is a book by Kevin Davis. It is called Editing Humanity, the CRISPR Revolution and the New Era of Genome Editing. Uh, this book is also an excellent book. It was uh, published in 2020 and it provides the very same uh, description of how it all was all invented. Now, briefly, to present you a subject, what I would like to talk about. Um, indeed, prime editing, base editing are most significant develop, recent improvement and development invention in the field of genome editing. And uh, uh, we have to give a tribute to researchers working with David Leo and to David Liu himself. Those are who really made most important contribution, invented those methodologies. So let's start with a unique technique known as base editing that was invented in 2016. Briefly, when a single letter is changed in DNA sequence without cutting, uh, uh, the break, making a break in DNA, uh, that substitution by enzymatic chemical reaction uh, is the principle of base editing. So there is no cuts in the nucleic acids. Also, uh, uh, Leo developed technique known as prime editing and this method is able to edit a long sequence of letters in DNA with a double strand break. Uh, those inventions have been published and I'll give you uh, references for these works. Uh, and those published references, uh, so I'm talking not about uh, the, the books that are 
more kind of history account of what happened, but uh, scientific papers that pr present these inventions. So, uh, base editor, uh, publication and base editor was in the nature in 2016 by Comor, colleagues and David Liu, Nature 2016. Uh, another article, Gaudeli, Comor, Liu, Nature 2017. And then there were more and more publications with uh, protocols, with improvement and so on. Prime editor methodology was um, a report was published in Nature in 2019. Anzalone uh, and colleagues, uh, David Liu, Nature 2019. Um, more and more papers from Liu and uh, from uh, researchers who invented those methodologies. I'll, I'll, I'll present you who they are. Now, I think it's also important to mention uh, some uh, sources that maybe you are less familiar with, but are also very intriguingly in important in a field of um, genome editing that maybe you didn't hear of, even if you are interested in the subject. I'm not talking about the specialists, of course, who possibly know about those things. I'm talking about uh, Eugene Kunin's uh, book, The Logic of Chance, Nature and the Origin of Biological Evolution. It was uh, published in English, Pearson Education, in 2012. It was published in Russian in 2014. So it, uh, it is, there is a Russian version because uh, uh, Professor Eugene Kunin uh, uh, worked in NCBI. Um, uh, so he's American researcher, but he has ties with uh, Russian academic system. So and Russian in origin, uh, Russian uh, trained in Russian biologist. So uh, the logic of chance was published in English and in Russian. Why I mentioned this book, because. It has nice introduction in the subject of genome editing, in the subject of CRISPR, and where CRISPR comes from, and uh, maybe uh, uh, those uh, studies that you might be less accessible to you, and maybe uh, you might have not so much uh, uh, chance to get familiar with those studies unless you read Eugene Kunin's book. So th those mm, are basic references. Code Breaker by Walter Isaacson, Editing Humanity by Kevin Davis, uh, and the book uh, by Eugene Kunin, The Logic of Chance. Uh, in Russian it's called Logika Slucha o природе происхождения биологической эволюции. Um, I, I would also like to mention some kind of uh, inspiring references, not linked to the subject of genome editing, but uh, linked to my philosophy in my attitude towards biological research. What does inspire me? <laughs> so I, I cannot resist to mention the book by Francois Jacob. The Logic of Life, uh, that was um, published by Princeton University Press in 1993. And the, another book, a uh, wonderful, fantastic book uh, of essays on science and scientists by Max Perutz. The book is called I Wish I Had Made You Angry Earlier. And that is fantastic, fantastic book on science, scientists, discoveries, and society. And this book was published by Cold Spring Harbor Laboratory. Uh, why 
it is interesting because it presents in a very intriguing, unusual way, most important discoveries in biology in the 20th century. And I think those discoveries really like kind of um, the foundation on which uh, researchers in our days may be being inspired on those previous discoveries uh, were able to make their own contribution. By the way, there is a very nice uh, description, a uh, history of uh, Francois Jacob's uh, life path and how he became biologist and how he made his contribution in invention of operon concept uh, and uh, how it was all going on with him. Very difficult life. Uh, Max Perutz himself was an exceptional scientist with very unusual fate and life path. So all these things you can th think how it is all connected to genome editing field. Well, figure out. I, I let you figure out it on your own. So let me present you now briefly a history of uh, those two major recent advancement in genome editing fields, field, uh, base editing and prime editing. I'll read you a little bit now a fragment from uh, Walter Isaacson's book, a chapter uh, that is called uh, Cold Spring Harbor Virtual, and uh, we are talking about CRISPR Marsh's own. So I'll read a little bit from that chapter to you to describe what was going on at that time. We are talking about the conference in Cold Spring Harbor devoted to CRISPR. And it's very interesting because I myself participated in a more recent conference on the in the latest conference that was just a few months ago. This conference uh, that is described in uh, Walter Isaacson's book happened in 2020. Conference in which I participated was a, a year later. So uh, that first conference, uh, that, that conference in 2020 was uh, the conference where uh, I am reading. Most important though, uh, made by Dudnes co-organizers of the conference, Harvard soft-spoken superstar David Liu. He has a foot in both the Cambridge and Ber Berkeley camps. After graduating first in his class from Harvard, he got his doctorate from Berkeley and then returned to teach at Harvard, where he became a Feng Chang colleague at the Broad Institute and co-founder with him of Beam Therapeutics. With his disarming gentility and friendly intellect, he has remained close to both Dudna and Chang. Beginning in 2016, Liu began developing a technique known as base editing, which can make precise change in a single letter in DNA without cutting a break in the strands. It is like a very sharp pencil for editing. At the 2019 Cold Spring Harbor meeting, he announced a further advance called Prime Editing, in which a guide RNA can carry a long sequence to be edited into a targeted segment of DNA. It requires making only a teeny nick in the DNA rather than a double strand break. Edits of up to 80 letters are possible. If CRISPR-Cas9 is like scissors and base editors are like pencils, then you can think of prime editors as like a word processors, Leo explained. Dozens of the presentations in 2020 meetings involved 
the young researchers who had found uh, clever new ways to use base editing and prime editing. Liu himself described uh, his latest discovery of how to deploy base editing tools into the energy producing uh, region of the cell. In addition, he was a co-author of the paper that described a user-friendly web application, web app, that could be used to design prime editing experiments. COVID had not slowed the CRISPR revolution. The importance of base editing was highlighted on the cover of a conference book just uh, below the uh, colorized picture of Rosalind Franklin was a beautiful 3D image of base editor attached to a purple RNA guide and a blue DNA target. Using some of the structure of biology and imaging technique that Franklin pioneered, the image had been published a month earlier by the lab of Dudna and Leo with much of the work done by Gavin Nott, the postdoc who had taught me how to edit DNA using CRISPR. Important notion about uh, this uh, uh, CRISPR 2020 conference is uh, that in Cold Spring Harbor is um, that organizers uh, made it possible to use Zoom breakout rooms in which people could network online. No, but there were elements of face-to-face -face interaction that uh, were lost in this communication. And uh, of course, those things, uh, uh, they, they are sort of consequence of uh, what impact of pandemic on research and researchers and communication between researchers. But uh, basically, that is a very peculiar thing that uh, many conferences moved to online format, including this conference. And indeed, uh, I, I, I completed the reading, just to make my own comment here, that uh, this conference was entirely put online in 2021. And we can listen, talk, make presentation, comments, uh, post uh, uh, contents, uh, video uh, files, posters, all in a digital uh, electronic format being put on the server. And uh, also um, uh, a way of uh, communication on this meeting was a Slack. Uh, so you, there was a one of you Slack channels dedicated to communication between researchers. Uh, but unfortunately, I just again, my brief comment here, my personal comment, that Slack is a wonderful communication tool for researchers, but you need to maintain active Slack account uh, in order to uh, continue this communication, to maintain this communication uh, digitally from few researchers uh, who subscribe uh, to you on Slack. So I, I, I did participate, I myself did participate in that Slack communication, uh, found it very nice and convenient. But again, uh, you know, we need sponsors to pay for Slack account to be able to maintain it. And also, of course, issues of intellectual property here involved as well. But it's, it's a wonderful communication tool if you can afford it, okay? That's just my own comment on, on that. Um, it's not a criticism, just uh, a notion that if you can pay for it, go ahead and pay for it. Now I would like to tell you a little bit more about David Liu and his colleagues who invented that methodology. And I take this fragment from uh, Editing Humanity by Kevin Davis. A very nice uh, description. He starts first, he uh, presents Feng Chang, uh, uh, Harvard, outstanding Harvard researcher, and uh, his discoveries, his contribution. And uh, 
After talking about Feng Shang and his research, he now uh, starts uh, to tell us about David Liu. A decade older than Shang, there are indeed some striking similarities in David Liu's career. Son of Taiwanese parents, Liu was born and raised in Riverside, California. His mother was a physics professor, his father an engineer. Like Shang, Liu's scientific talent shone brightly in high school, driven by what he admits was some immature competitiveness. Quote. In 1990, he placed uh, second in the national Westinghouse science talent search competition and first in his high school. As a freshman in Harvard University, Liu's interest gravitated toward physics rather than chemistry. But uh, that changed in December 1990 when he traveled to Stockholm as one of five top U.S. students to attend lectures by newly uh, minted Nobel laureates, including Harvard chemistry professor E. J. Corey. Liu was enthralled by Corey's work on creating new molecules, like assembling Lego blocks. Afterwards, Liu and Corey, he wanted to work in his lab. He got that opportunity, eventually graded the top of his class of more than 1,600 students in 1994. Years later, Corey told the Boston Globe that Liu was, quote, going to be a superstar. <laughs> well, Liu moved back to California to take up a PhD in Berkeley with Peter Schultz a talented molecular biologist who was literally rewriting genetic code. Liu spent the next few years studying methods to expand the genetic alphabet, to encode uh, and incorporate synthetic amino acids. Beyond the 20 that uh, occur naturally in the body, into proteins. A lecture on his groundbreaking graduate work back at Harvard turned into a, a de facto faculty interview. Occasionally, scientists shine so spectacularly during their PhD that like a professional basketball team drafting a high school prodigy, a university will offer them faculty position. Harvard offered Leo professorship bypassing the usual four to five years postdoctoral training. It was too tempting to refuse, but he doesn't recommend. Others tried. I had no idea what I was doing, Leo admits. In autumn 1999, at the ripe of old age of 26, Leo joined the ranks of Harvard's illustrious chemistry faculty with its seven Nobel Prizes since 1964. Having demonstrated possibilities of performing molecular evolution on the building blocks of life, Liu decided to go for something really big, protein evolution in the test tube. During his first decade at Harvard, Liu's lab made a name in building new technologies for molecular evolution and applying them to treat human disease. The key method is called phage-assisted continuous evolution, P-A-C-E, PACE, developed by Kevin Eswell. In 1999, Liu, even dubbed in a type of genome editing, effort to construct a gene activator 
made up of DNA or RNA, triple helix that could be targeted to various sites in the genome to regulate genes or cut DNA. Leo admits the project, uh, quote, utterly failed, but even though he moved productively into other areas of research, his interest in performing chemistry on the genome stuck. They lured the top students competing against some of the biggest names in chemistry like Schreiber, Shostak, and uh, Whiteside. Leo promoted his annual lab open house with eye-catching posters. One showed Leo metamorphosizing into Regis Philbin, the host of Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? Others showed him in a full matrix regalia or dressed up as Spider-Man, villain, Dr. Oct Octopus. The strategy apparently worked. Leo's research took off in 2005. He was promoted to full professor just 31 years old. Of age. The same year he joined Dudna as one of about 300 investigators appointed and technically employed by Howard Hughes Medical Institute, one of the highest echelons in American biomedical research. For all of Leo's brilliance and the commitment in the lab, he strives to maintain healthy work-life balance. Quote, chemistry is life, but life is a lot more than chemistry, he says. Some of his habit, hobbits, sorry, some of his hobbies uh, harken back to his engineering upbringing. In early 2000s, he built a featherweight airplane that could almost hover indoors before drones become a phenomenon. He also built a Lego robot called a Musapult, which would entertain his cats by throwing a toy into the direction of heat signature using a sensor from burglar alarm. Leo's most intense and lucrative hobby, first picked up during his student years, was blackjack. His mathematical ability to count cards, legal activity, became a teachable moment and something bordering on obsession. Leo started teaching weekly course for enthusiastic students, from which he cultivated a devoted squad of 14 blackjack ninjas. Every few months, young professor would lead a delegation to Las Vegas and uh, spend weekend gambling. Well, wow. Sometimes running 15 hours at a time. Leo joked he was just uh, hoping to earn enough to buy his wife a nice pair of earrings, but his uh, posse was known to win absurd sums of money. On Sunday nights, Leo took the jet blue red eye flight from Las Vegas to Boston, running up to teach his morning chemistry lecture pretty tired. He would ask himself why he was flying to casinos to gamble with students. Occasionally, though, after a particularly successful trip, he wondered if being a chemistry professor was all it was cracked up to be. 
Eventually, his hand was forced. The MGM Grand Casino in Las Vegas banned him. But he still carries a laminated card of calculations in his wallet uh, should a opportunity knock. In his office on the third floor of the Broad Institute, besides Liu's own art, skilled photography and mineral collection, visitor cannot help but notice the 30-pound, 3-foot Iron Man Hulkbuster replica. Now let me read you a, a little bit more about Nicole Gaudelli and about Alexis Camor, because those who are invented the method, right? So not only David Liu himself. Let me read uh, about them. About Nicole Gaudelli. Growing up in upstate New York, Nicole Gaudelli's love for science and nature was nurtured by her father and grandfather. She loved going to zoos, fishing, growing crystals, building water rockets. She thought about being a doctor, but her father suggested that she could help many more people by being a research scientist. During her PhD in Johns Hopkins, Gaudeli was captivated by a guest seminar given by Liu, talking about pace P-A-C-E, and molecular evolution. She decided to apply for a coveted position in Leo's lab for her postdoc. Shortly after Gaudeli arrived in the lab in 2014, she befriended a new postdoc from Southern California who had just earned her PhD from Caltech. Alexis Camor was working on something completely different, a project inspired by months of email exchanges with Leo prior to her arrival. Comor had interviewed with Leo 18 months before finishing her PhD, hoping to persuade a big name chemist that she could flourish in his group. Comor began emailing Liu ideas for her postdoc project, uh, mutually guided brainstorming, uh, is how Liu puts it. One item was an idea she'd sketched out to fulfill a Caltech graduation requirement. She wanted to evolve a ribonucleosome enzyme in the lab so that it could degrade a specific sequence of RNA. Liu liked it, but suggested she think about DNA-based editors, in particular the CRISPR-associated nuclease Cas9. On November 1st, 2013, he emailed her, if you could program a specific a to G, for example, change in the human genome, you could really transform genome engineering and possibly human therapeutics. End of citation. Kamar was excited but confused. Why is he so crazy about this Cas9 thing, she thought. But she kept refining her idea, and by the time she arrived in Boston in September 2014, the basic idea of base editing had been born. Ironically, Liu had confused Comor and Gaudeli in the run-up to their arrival, mixing up their respective project ideas. On Comor's first day. Leo introduced her to the rest of the male dominated, dominated lab and then Gaudeli. This is Nicole. I kept confusing you. You can see why. The pair 
burst out laughing. Gaudele has dark hair and eyes, unmistakable Italian heritage. Comor is quintessential Californian, blonde hair, blue eyes. They became first friends. Comor's first six months were uncomfortable, far apart from her husband, who was still in California finishing his PhD. She hoped Boston would be a short-term stay to complete a postdoc, so she could return to her family in the California sunshine. Technology development projects are super risky, she told me. At the beginning, I didn't know what I was doing. Group meetings in which her plans were micro-dissected by quizzical, sometimes skeptical colleagues were the bane of her existence. Alfa Dudna was a classical chemist. The field of CRISPR genome editing had evolved as a largely biological discipline. Comor and Liu brought different skill set and uh, it paid off. Single strand DNA is a lot more reactive than when it is double stranded, Comor says. When Cas9 binds to DNA, it unzips the double helix to expose a stretch of about five bases of single-stranded DNA. Here, then, was a window to perform some cool chemistry. Comor began with cytidine daminase, an enzyme that converts cytidine C to uracil U, but only works on a single-stranded DNA. By tethering the deaminase to inactivate dead form of Cas9, she would create a homing machine to seek out a target DNA sequence and unspool a short strange of DNA without cutting the strand upon which the cytidine deaminase could act. After about eight months, Comor had a prototype base editor working that could convert a CG base pair and into UG mismatch pairing. Now she faced a new problem. Cell's DNA repair system won't tolerate this mismatch. So it tries to restore natural base pair, like uh, finding the right match in a jigsaw puzzle. Facing this UG intermediate, Comor needed to tip the odds to favor the solution she wanted. Coax the cell to repair the G, which would result in a TA base pair. She had a final. She had to find. Uh, she had to find a trick to complete the base edit. Rather than watch the cell's DNA repair process simply under the good work by fixing the U, reverting the base pairing back to where she would start it. Comor's first trick was to find a way to block enzyme that rips out uracils like nobody's business. So she fused a third component to the base editor, an inhibitor of uracil DNA glycosylase or the zipper. In a, it uh, shifted the balance a bit, but not as much as she hoped. And then one day she had an uh, epiphany while talking to a colleague in the lab kitchen. It just came to me, she recalls. Oh my God, we are working with an endonuclease. Also, she was working with a dead form of Cas9. 
It was still a nucleus that cleaves DNA. By replacing a single amino acid in the enzyme, Comor could restore a nicase function that would uh, clip one strand of the double helix. By nicking the G containing strand, leaving the U intact, she could trigger the cell's DNA repair machinery to fix the G rather than U nucleotide. Now a short commentary by uh, Kevin Davis on how it all works. Uh, he just provides an example. C base editor targets CG base pair, deaminates the C to a U, resulting in UG mismatch. Cells DNA repair process seek to repair this mismatch in one of two ways either by switching the U back to C or by fixing the G to A, thus uh, creating UA or TA base pair. The goal was to push the system toward the latter, resulting in a CG to TA substitution. So, so Alexis Kamor. Uh, was uh, thinking how cell can uh, uh, trigger repair machinery to fix G rather than U nucleotide. And then Komor told Liu about this brilliant idea. He started uh, swearing. He wanted to start writing up the paper for a fear of being scooped. But Komor's idea was obviously worth trying. How quickly can you do it? Kamor spent Christmas 2015 back home in California, drafting the manuscript, editing it in a Christmas day and even uh, foraging her 10-year high school reunion. The Nature reviewers initially gave the paper a rough ride on technical grounds and it was rejected. Kamor worked tirelessly to rebut each of the criticism while Leo found the editor Angela Eagleston to appeal. The revised paper was accepted and eventually published in April 2016. When I asked Kamor why they choose nature, she laughed. Where else would we send it? As Kamor was developing the first C to T base editor, CBE, Gaudeli grew interest in, in increasingly interested in her friend's research. After much internal debate, she decided to abandon her own project, switching instead to try to develop a novel base editor that could do the reverse reaction. A to G base editor. This would be more useful setup for medical applications to about half of the no pathogenic mutation in human genes involved mutation of G to A. Indeed, there is a high spontaneous mutation rate involving deamination of cytodynes, de novo to uracil, resulting in erroneous TA base pair. Developing a system that could reverse this common source of human mutation could have profound medical benefit. There was one small problem, however. Gaudeli didn't have any starting material. Leo had one unbreakable rule in his lab that had endured more than 15 years. Never start a project by evolving 
the starting material. But Gaudeli didn't have much choice. There was no natural enzyme that deaminates A to G in DNA. Undaunted, Gaudeli trained her sites on a bacterial enzyme called TED-A, which works on RNA, not DNA. With nothing to lose, Gaudeli performed slightly crazy experiment. Evolution in a test tube to try to generate the desired properties. The first round of evolution yielded a mutation that enabled the alter enzyme to tackle single-stranded DNA instead of RNA as a substrate. The mutation was in the precise location that Gaudeli would have expected. She sent a quick uh, slide to Leo, uh, who started swearing again. Holy, this is our smoking gun, he replied. Several rounds later, Gaudeli had evolved a potent A-based editor, or ABE. She was also able to demonstrate the ability to modify mutations in genes responsible for hereditary diseases, including uh, homochromatosis and sickle cell disease. Like a more Gaudelis based editor, editing, editor exploits also earned her first author paper in Nature. Uh, I just mentioned uh, that reference in the beginning. By now, Revol journal editors were visiting Liu to solicit hot papers like Gaudelis. It sailed through peer review over a long weekend. Researchers around the world immediately jumped and the base editing hand wagon. Looking back, Gaudeli took an almost ludicrous, ludicrous, gentle, but uh, she gamble, but uh, she pays tribute to nurturing environment in Leo's lab and her Hulkbuster of the boss, who just make you feel invincible. She could have been any faculty position she wanted, but she elected to, to join Beam Therapeutics, new biotech company Leo co-founded with his comrades in arms, Feng Shang and Kate Jung. Gaudeli started to think about the friends and family base editing night eventually held. What if one of those people was my father, my grandfather? What if that was a hypothetical child of mine? A friend of Leo's, a pediatric oncologist at Stanford named Agnieszka Chekhovic came up with the company's name. She texted Leo her suggestion, BEAM, which evokes a laser precision technology. It also happens to stand for base editing and more, she pointed out. What's more? Leo asked. 